and we are back between two yetis with Mari. That's Very right. good to see you. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? And we're back here at the party in Fort Lauderdale. But uh, you were just telling us a little bit about what you do, which sounds very interesting. It is, actually. I work with an amazing organization. We care about providing opportunities for immigrants. Okay. Needed more than ever. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> immigrants, any particular type of immigrants? Well, uh, the name of the organization is Hispanic Unity of Florida. Okay. Uh, but 60% of our clients are Hispanic. 40% are from other 25 countries. So okay. we're very international and it's not just for Hispanics. Okay, so the Hispanics... We, found, we were founded by Hispanics gotcha, 35 okay. years ago. Okay. Uh, but we serve uh, people from any way, I mean, anywhere in the world, from Russia to Europe to anywhere. Yeah. So your organization, is it a non-profit organization? It's a non-profit, yes. So you would provide assistance, like you were saying, for green cards and immigration? and. That's part of it. Actually, we work in four areas. Um, we provide services in education, okay. work development, like training, job training, job placement. Uh, citizenship and uh, health. Interesting. Interesting. Is most of the immigrants in Florida in Miami or is it spread out throughout South Florida or? Well, South Florida is a melting pot. Absolutely. No, it really is. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess most Hispanics uh, would be in Miami Dade, but I mean, there's all just people from anywhere, for Lauderdale even. Absolutely, and you cover all those people as well? Yes, yes we do. Well, um, the organization was founded here in, for, in uh, Broward. Okay. For the first time, we're in Miami now. Okay. We're offering uh, citizenship classes. Inter now, citizenship classes, mm -hmm. do you, what, do you, what do you learn there? Is it just the history of the... Because I'm trying to go for my citizenship now, so I'm going well, to carry around a constitution. Well, you should go and visit. I think I might. We can help you out. Excellent. Get, get a card later. Yeah, you've got to take yours, right? Yeah, I've got, I've, got, I've got the citizen advice book that you gave me. Anyway, sorry, diverging. Um, well, to become a citizen in the United States, you need to take a test. Mm -hmm. Right, of history, for example, and uh, we train you for that. And okay. it's uh, the cost is some. I mean, a lot of the services we provide are free, uh, but you can be trained there at the classes, mm -hmm. and then you'll be prepared for the interview. Have you seen a big rise in immigration recently that requires your assistance? Or has it been quite steady for a number of years? Or It's an interesting question because it changes. I yeah. mean, in the last uh, 10 years, we have helped over 12,000 people become U.S. citizens. Good Lord, really? Yes. Um, and it just changes. Like right now, people are feeling like they do need to become U.S. citizens. If you have been a resident for a while, you want to become U.S. citizen. But some people are afraid of even doing that. I mean, there's so much uncertainty right now mm -hmm. uh, that people don't feel comfortable. So it's uh, the job for us is uh, very educational. We need yeah. to tell people, this is a time to become a yeah. U.S. citizen. You yeah. need to, I mean, if you're here, if you're a resident, um, you need to know that you have rights to and that it is your duty to become a U.S. citizen. Absolutely. It's not just the benefits that come with it, but the the duties that you have to do. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, duties that when you become a citizen, what are there? Like you have to obviously have, you're on for jury duty at that point. Are there any other yeah, negatives like fine. that? Not like a negative, <laughs> but is there anything else that you're committed to by doing that? I mean, because I've got a green card, I'm a permanent resident. So what would my change in status to a citizen, what would that entitle me to and what would that commit me to? Well, in a way, it's saying, okay, I'm here in the United States and I abide by the laws here, uh, that I understand what they are, yeah. uh, and that you become part of the values of this country. Right. The values of opportunity, the values of family, the values of, I mean, I'm from uh, South America, I'm Colombian, okay. um, and when I became a U.S. citizen, I have to learn about the history here. Yeah. Like, I came here as a U.S. resident, uh, but I had to learn a little bit about, you know, the basics, about history, about geography, about, uh, you know, many other things. But it's important that you understand that by becoming a U.S. citizen, you have certain benefits, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's 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 a duty. Yeah. It's a duty that you have to abide by the laws of the country and that you understand those. Interesting. And do you find like different cultures have problems merging into American society or do you find that everyone's kind of 
accepting, we're skirting very close to political lines here, so do you find everyone who comes here shares the same values or wants to learn the values, or do you find there's kind of a, a problem mixing? No, I think... Um, like people who come to you, do they have problems integrating into this society? It's all a process of assimilating the culture. Assimilation, yes. yes. Um, I think for the most part, people understand what it takes to be an American. Mm -hmm. um, and these are, most of the values are global values. Mm -hmm. It's a value yeah. of hard work, mm -hmm. you know, to become... I don't know, whatever you want to become in your life to realize your American dream. Mm -hmm. um, it takes time, it takes knowledge, it takes education, but for the most part, people want to do it. Yeah. People understand it. It's just a matter of assimilating and just translating a lot of that into what you understand. And I think um, what happens is that when you don't understand sometimes, and this comes for the people that uh, are here, sometimes whenever you don't know a culture, whenever you don't want that because you don't know it. Yeah. So it's just a process of assimilation. So how did you start get into this organization then? What's your background? You said you came from Colombia over here and... Yeah, well, um, I came here 30 years ago. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, so I'll, my life uh, mostly has been in marketing. I've worked with different organizations, mostly 500, mm -hmm. um, I mean, Fortune 500 companies, large organizations, middle organizations. I had my own business for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but there was something that was missing there and it was just like giving back. Yeah. And when and I heard about this organization and said, okay, yeah, like you really, it was, seem, it was something very personal because I'm an immigrant. My, yeah. my family went through a very hard time when they were here. Like right. they had to work very hard. They didn't speak English. So we started from zero. Yeah. And this is the story of the immigrants yeah. that I help. So I know their experience and it was just very natural. Yes. Interesting. And so was it, was it a hard transition for you coming over from Colombia or was like it, was, it was a little bit. I can only imagine how hard it was for my parents. Oh, God, I can imagine. Coming here, you know, when you're 60 and you don't know the language and you have to start from scratch and yeah. you have to, you know... Provide like, for your family. And provide for, you know, a family of two teenagers, three teenagers yeah. um, and a wife. So I can imagine for them. I mean, for me, obviously, yes, it was hard because yeah. I didn't speak English either. But I, I was young. I mean, I was 13 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, I learned pretty quick. Interesting. So it was just different. Yeah. I, I just think about how hard it was for my parents. Do you think it's easier now when there's like big communities of immigrants now that can all bundle together and help each other? Easier than it was for your parents, you think? Yes. Um, it is easier and at times it makes it harder too mm. to, to say, okay, um, like I really have to do this. I, that's part of the educational job that we have to do. Like um, people come and they want to learn English, but they go back home and they start talking in Spanish. Yeah, yeah. So that's sort of the thing that we need to work with them. Like my parents had no choice. We came to New York and yeah. they had to learn it quick, and I had to learn it. So you went to Columbia to New York. I went to yes. Yeah, wow. I bet that was a hard transition because it's bloody cold up there, isn't it? It was very cold. <laughs> it was freezing so the first that, time I got there. So, so that's why you're down here in South Florida now, right? Well, we came here for many reasons. Um, my brother found a really good job here, so mm -hmm. we moved, like he moved the family here to Miami many years ago. But uh, when I came here, we went to New York. Mm -hmm. My father had businesses in Colombia for many years, mm -hmm. but he we had to leave the country and when he arrived in New York he had to do all sorts of jobs like work in a restaurant, he, I don't know, I don't even know the whole story, but... Um, hard work though. Hard work and yeah. then he came here and he opened a landscaping business mm -hmm. yep, yep, yep. and then my other brother opened the landscaping business and they ended up working you know, like 20, 25 years in the same business. Oh, very cool. Why did you have to leave Columbia? Or is this a... Because... This sounds uh, like a cool story that... Uh, it's not that cool. It's just, you know, the situation that we as immigrants, um, we go through this. My father had a business in Colombia for many years and then the business closed and there were no opportunities for him. He was yeah. 60 years old. Yep. 
Um, that was one thing. The other thing is that at that time, uh, the late 80s in Colombia was very difficult. The security wise. Was it dangerous? It was, yeah, it was somewhat dangerous. So uh, he felt that it was the right thing to do. For the family, yeah. Yes. Because coming from Europe, we don't hear this kind of the, these stories mm -hmm. of unrest in the 80s and everything that happened in Miami as well. So it's very interesting to see that. Uh, you know, people do very well. Yeah, the 80s and 90s in, in Colombia, especially Medellin, it was very difficult. Yeah. But it's very different now. I mean, you went through a period and, and now it's beautiful. Cool. So anyone watching this who are, is an immigrant, how do they get in touch with your organization to help? Well, they can visit www.hispanicunity.org. Okay, perfect. We're here to serve anyone from Broward or Miami. Well, I'm going to be giving you a call because yes. I need my citizenship. <laughs> Thank you very much Thank for your so time much. and uh, we'll see you again.